Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise now we're going to look at combinations. So combinations is different from permutations in the sense that we no longer care about the order in which individual values exist. So let me just give you a, hopefully a simple example to illustrate this. If I have the values uh, 1, 2, and 3. How many different permutations exist uh, if we were to choose three values out of these three? So here's one, two, and three is one permutation. One, three, and two is another. Two, one, three. Two, uh, three, one. Three, one, two, and three, two, one. So here I have six different permutations uh, of those three values. Using our formula, here I would have, this was n, so n factorial, divided by n minus n factorial, and so this is 3 factorial divided by 3 minus 3, and of course we know 0 factorial is equal to 1 by definition, so this is simply 3 factorial, so this is 3 times 2 times 1, and so here I have six permutations uh, of these three values. Now, what if I don't care about the order? Well, what I need to do then is remove from these calculations the number of orders, or the number of ways that these values can be ordered. And the way in which we do that is we simply add in our formula, so now I'm going to adjust this formula, Instead of C, now I'm going to say, uh, instead of P, I'm going to say C, because now we're talking about combinations. So now I need to adjust this formula for the number of ways that these values can be ordered. And in this case, that's defined by the number that we're choosing, which is going to be 3. So here I have now 3 factorial, and so this becomes 1. Okay, how do, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that we don't care about all of these different orderings of these values. This is just one combination. I have three numbers. I'm choosing three of them. There exists only one combination. Now, that differs from if I were to consider three values, but now choose two instead of choosing three. So if now I'm only going to choose two values, how many different permutations uh, might there be? So I have 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2 and 1, 2 and 3, uh, 3 and 1, 3 and 2. So now I have, uh, again, it turns out to have six different permutations. The formula, again, n over n minus little n factorial, this is 3 factorial divided by 3 minus 2 factorial, which is again 3 factorial, because this denominator is just 1 factorial, which is also just 1. And so here now I have a value of 6. So, so this is the same. This is kind of uninteresting. You're probably saying, so what, Peter? This is so boring. But what if we consider combinations? So what that implies is that this value here, this one and this one, are no longer distinguished uh, as being separate entities. So I can only have one of those. Uh, similarly, these two, one and three and three and one, those two are no longer distinguished because it contains the same values. So I can only have one of those. And the next ones, 2 and 3 and 3 and 2, again, combinations, we don't distinguish between different orders, so I'm going to eliminate also uh, one of those. So now what are we left with? I have just three that remain, a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, and a 2 and a 3. It doesn't matter what order uh, those are in. So I have just three combinations. How does our formula reflect this? So 
writing this out, so here's the number of permutations uh, that exist. But now we adjust for the fact that, well, we're just choosing two values, and I don't care what their order is. So I'm going to take that out, the number of ordering of those two values. So this is then going to be uh, have that little n factorial, the number that we're choosing, and the number of orders that it can take. So here now I have 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 minus 2 factorial. So this becomes 3, this becomes 2 and 1. And so let me just expand this. This is going to be 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 1 times 2. And so this cancels this, and I have 3. So here we have our 3 combinations. So all we're doing now, we're adding this little piece in the denominator to adjust for the number of permutations, or the number in, of ways in which two values can be ordered, and we're taking that out of the calculation because that no longer is relevant to this discussion of combinations. So with that in mind, let's, uh, let's get into our, into our exercise here. So now we're going to a vegetarian restaurant and we have a salad bar. It has 20 different ingredients in that salad bar. And we can get a small salad or we can get a large salad. Five ingredients or 10 ingredients. And the salad is going to be all mixed together. So it doesn't matter what order we put them in, right? So we're clearly talking about combinations. Now we can only use each ingredient once. If we allow for repetition and combinations, it gets a little bit more tricky. So we're not going to get into it uh, at this point. So we can only use each ingredient once. How many different combinations are there at each price? So let's look at, uh, so here I'm going to do part one. This is going to be the $5 salad. So how many different combinations? Well, I have 20 ingredients. So this numerator, if we were to calculate this numerator, and we will when we, get the, when we pull out the calculator, this will tell us the number of ways uh, that we can order 20 different ingredients in our salad, right? This was 20 factorial. Uh, this would give us the total number of permutations for all 20 ingredients. Now, I'm not choosing 20. I'm going to choose only 5. So then this would tell us the number of permutations that we could have if I had 20 ingredients and I only select five of them, the way the equation is right now will tell us how many different permutations exist if order were to matter, uh, if we're layering that salad in a particular way, but I'm not. Everything's getting tossed together. So I need to remove the number of times or the number of ways in which those five ingredients could be ordered. We're going to take that out of the calculation, out of that number, because order here doesn't matter. And so now all we need to do is plug these numbers into our calculator, so 20 factorial. So that's how many different ways we could order 20 different ingredients. Divide this by, uh, this is going to be 5 factorial times, this is going to be 15 factorial equals 15,504. So there's 15,504 different combinations uh, of salad that I could produce. I have 20 options, um, and I pick five ingredients. It doesn't matter what order they're in. 15,504 different types of salads. If I were to choose 10 ingredients out of those 20, so if I were to choose 10 ingredients, now this becomes 20 factorial, 20 minus 10, factorial, so there's the number of permutations that I could take, the number of ways we could order or layer these 10 ingredients out of the 20 options, but I don't care about the order, so I'm going to take that out uh, of this calculation. And so here we have, again, 20 factorial in the numerator, divided by, I'm opening brackets here to simplify this calculation, 
10 factorial times 20 minus 10 is another 10 factorial. Close the bracket. 184,756. That's a lot of different salads that we can make. Okay, so that's uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, the, the, the formulas can sometimes look a little bit tedious, but really the calculations aren't too hard, especially if you've got that factorial button uh, on your calculator. Part B, if you asked your friend to uh, go and order for you, just guess. Guess what ingredients uh, you think I would choose. What is the probability that she would guess correctly? Well, in this first case, uh, that probability that probability for the five dollar salad would be one out of fifteen thousand five uh, was it five oh four I thought it was five forty let me just verify this calculation here I have a hunch I may have made a mistake twenty factorial divided by five factorial times fifteen factorial Oh, that's right, my mistake. I should just trust my own calculations. So a 1 in 15,504 chance of guessing correctly. Uh, for the more expensive salad, it would be a 1 in 184,756. So a pretty slim odds. So I wouldn't ask your friend to go and guess what you like, because chances are they'll bring back the wrong salad. You should probably just get your own. <laughs> okay, so for the next one, uh, now we're going to get dessert after salad. So how many different ways, let's see, we have uh, 10 different desserts, I get to pick three of them. So how many different ways, how many different combinations of desserts uh, are there? So here my combination, again, how many permutations, in other words, how many ways can we order all 10 of those? So that would be 10 factorial. If I only want three, then this is going to be 10 minus 3, that's how many ways we can order 3, it takes 3 out of those 10, that would be the number of permutations, but I don't care what order these 3 are in, so I'm going to take those out uh, of the calculation to give me the number of combinations. So now this calculation, let's get this out of the way, 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial times, this is 10 minus 3, so 7 factorial, 120, oops, 120 possible combinations of 3 items out of that set of 10. So now if I ask my friend to guess what, uh, what uh, desserts, there's a typo, what desserts you would choose. Now there's a 1 in 120 chance that my friend would guess the right combination of desserts for me. So uh, not as risky as having them guess the, the, which salad I want, uh, but still I'm probably better off going to, to pick my own desserts. Okay, I hope that this helps uh, understand this concept of combinations uh, a little bit better. Thanks for watching.